checking in for our Friday persistent stratocumulus, just about the same as yesterday here in Texas. Base is at 2000, and you know how that's going to look on the sounding. Cold air in the lower levels and an inversion up at about 10,000 feet. And that's a frontal inversion. That's the top of the cold layer. And above that, some very warm mid-level air. You can see if we brought that down between the dry and moist adiabatic lapse rate, we would get a surface temperature up in the 60s or lower 70s. So that's certainly tropical air overlying this deep cold air mass. And it's much the same elsewhere. Memphis, very similar profile there. And we can even venture over to Cincinnati. That cold air mass is more shallow, only up to 850 millibars, but the overall profile is very similar. The surface analysis for this afternoon shows high pressure across much of the plains, and that represents a cold air mass. Not super cold, but it is enough in volume to drive quite a bit of cold air south to the Gulf Coast. Some of that cold air feeding in the back of that system, leaving the Carolinas and some vast cold air advection stratocumulus covering pretty much the entire central and much of the eastern part of the country. Out in the western U.S., here comes our next weather system up there in northwestern Nevada. The tail end of the cold front coming through the Marysville area coming up to Sacramento and the warm front up there near Boise. This system is rather potent and we're going to see that Heading east-southeast over the weekend, out there in West Texas, return flow is getting ready to set up, and you can see the pressure falls just now starting to take hold there in Arizona. That's going to bring the flow around to the south, and that interaction of moisture and lift over Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, that's going to set the stage for some wintry weather. I do think that Pivotal Weather has some of the best vorticity charts on the internet. And we're going to use those. The European model, valid for this morning, shows the jet coming onshore where the pressure height lines are very close together. That outlines the position of the jet. And crossing the jet, a lobe of vorticity. And that's going to mean strong upward motion. This is a very concentrated area of lift. So this morning, it was up there near the Oregon California border. Running that forward into midday, you can see how everything shifts eastward. So the deserts of Oregon and southwestern Idaho, during these midday hours, they're getting the lift, and you can see that by evening, things start shifting towards northeastern Nevada, Wendover, Elko, and the Bonneville Salt Flats, getting some of that lift. And that moves into the Salt Lake City area. And you can kind of see that it's diving to the southeast. It's been taking a track. The, the, I'm talking about the stronger lift. The center of that lift seems to be taking a track kind of like that. So by this evening, about midnight, the heaviest lift there in Utah. And heading into the Four Corners area, some digging of that trough into New Mexico during the day tomorrow. And one thing I forgot to point out, later tonight, the upper level low closing off south of that high as it digs underneath that ridge. So by tomorrow night, some very strong lift there in New Mexico. And that'll be pushing out into West Texas early on Sunday and into Sunday night. So by Sunday night, there's the stronger lift, upper level low around the Abilene area, and we would expect the deformation zone and some of the heavier convective bands to be back in this area. you got to keep in mind that the surface low is going to be roughly out in this area around Houston, stacking towards the cold air with height to the 500 millibar low right there, and possibly the 300 millibar low somewhere up north. That means down in your lower levels, 850, 700, you're going to have that wraparound on the back side. 
that's where the cold conveyor belt is and that's also pretty close to that area of lift. And we switch over to the GFS because we want to compare the two great global models and find the differences. And when I was going through that European model, I was talking it out verbally because that helps impress everything that's happening in your head. And it makes it easier to compare these things as you go through the charts. And what I'm seeing based on that is a very similar progression of the areas of lift. So right there into Utah for tonight, that looks good. Coming into Four Corners and New Mexico and then West Texas. Yeah, that, that's all the same there. So then we arrive at Sunday night. Yep, low pressure in the same area, lift right there. That is just about right on with the European model. So I think there's some fairly good agreement between the models at the synoptic scale, and it's basically just going to boil down to the mesoscale details, and we're not really going to know that until tomorrow. The surface plots from Aviation Weather Center, not a whole lot to see. We can see the warm sector out to the south with lots of 50s in Nevada, and up to the north in Oregon, some snow coming down, and that's going to be north of the front. We can make out the cyclonic pattern in the wind field just barely. There it is right there. So the area convergence right around Winnemucca and southeastern Oregon. And out there in California, that's where the front has passed. Some snow in the higher elevations, but not really a whole lot of cold air. Looks like the cold front probably running about something like that. And we can see some of the details on the visible satellite imagery. The animation, not very smooth. It's got a cha-cha-cha thing going. Purina Cachow. But on the back side, extensive cumuliform clouds, that's going to be associated with that cold air advection. The front located about right here in Northern California, Northwestern Nevada. And you can see this area of highly stratiform clouds. That's going to correspond to the warm air advection north of the warm front. And there's how it looks on the water vapor imagery, the mid and upper level patterns wasting no time moving eastward. So this is going to be a very fast moving system. And as we saw in the model output, a lot of the lift is going to be in Utah in less than 12 hours. So I would expect that cold front to be advancing rapidly across northern Nevada during the day today. Then to put it all together, I'm going to show you the 3 kilometer NAM. This is a mesoscale model. You can see the very fine grain detail in that precip in Northern California. And let's watch that system move eastward. You can see what's almost like a line of snow showers moving across the northern counties of Nevada. Also, the thickness gradient right there, that pretty much puts the cold front out ahead of that line. So we're looking at about right there for later this afternoon. By this evening, moving into Utah, just like we mentioned, you can see the thickness gradient right there. So I think we're going to be seeing the cold front pushing through central Nevada. Would be kind of nice to have some wind plots, but I guess that would make the chart kind of cluttered. Anyway, tomorrow morning, there goes the precip into the Four Corners area. So this is all the cold air mass now. The cold front has pushed south. Looks like it's already cleared Las Vegas and Gallup and Flagstaff. But this is still kind of a dry front. There's just not much precip associated with this system at this time. However, by tomorrow afternoon, you can see the ridging up to the north. This is all representing high pressure. Also, low pressure out there in the deserts, and that gives us our pressure gradient flowing like that, which brings moisture into the mix. And there it goes, interacting with that system over northern New Mexico, eastern New Mexico, getting some snow, and the whole thing spreads into West Texas. So it looks like Big Springs getting hit hard once again, areas south of Lubbock, and down into the big country and towards Waco, Looks like they're getting some good snow bands also for Sunday. And then things shift eastward. We're going to catch some of this here, so I'm going to try to show you some of that in the supporter video for Monday. 
You can see the effect of that cold core system up there in the Wichita Falls area Sunday night, and then the main Bear Clinic zone located to the south, the cold front located off the Gulf Coast, and the warm front like that. So this is all elevated to some extent. That's the isentropic lift flowing over the cold dome, and the whole thing moves to the east. That's beyond the range of these forecast panels. But anyway, that's how the system looks to be coming together for this weekend. Now here's a good way to see the interaction of moisture. We're looking at the 850 millibar dew point, so this is going to be up above the surface at about 5,000 feet MSL. So starting out this morning, you can see Texas is under north flow. Not much moisture. We're looking at dew points in the 30s and 40s. Well, mostly the 30s. The main weather system located right there. Now watch that area of New Mexico and Arizona as we tap forward. And especially West Texas. You can see the flow starting to set up from the south. Kind of a weak low-level jet coming up into eastern New Mexico. And that's going to tap this moisture down to the south. So right now we're at about midnight in the main system coming through Utah. And you can see some of the moisture air back behind the cold front in northern Nevada. Then running that forward, we're still flooding moisture northward into New Mexico. Not much, but that will raise the dew points into the 30s and 40s up aloft. Maybe we can drop SQT in the east side of that low there. And you can see the column is pretty much moistened up. Yeah, still not much moisture, so 30s dew points. And then getting in, into Sunday morning, now we're starting to bring 40s up there towards the hill country. Now, one thing you can clearly see is that there's a reservoir of dry air up there in Arkansas. So we're going to see wet bulbing become an important process in North Texas once again. Drop in a scutee around the Red River region. You can see that dry air in the low levels, but up aloft, very, very humid, lots of lift. You can see the omegas are elevated. And so there's going to be wet bulbing taking place in the column, and we'll initially see probably some rain from melted snow, and eventually some of the snow will start making it down. You can see there's not much of a warm nose indicated, so we're not going to see much in the way of freezing rain or sleet. And 850 millibars is where we should be looking for that warm nose. And there's some evidence of it right there around San Antonio midday on Sunday, but it just does not punch into the system very much. And finally, by Sunday night, it's only found around Lake Charles, Louisiana. So anyway, this weekend, this will give you some ideas for how to approach analyzing the system. You can use some of those same products from sites like Pivotal Weather, Tropical Tidbits, and weathernerds.org. So that's all for our Friday webcast. Thank you for joining, and we'll see the supporters on Monday and everybody else on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.